What's up, my name is Chris, and in today's video, I will be comparing the $500 Gaggia Classic Pro to the $1,750 Rocket Apartamento Nero. Quick disclaimer here, I no longer have the Gaggia Classic Pro as I sold it before getting the Rocket, so I'll be using some footage from some of my older videos. First things first, let's talk about the size and build quality. The $500 Gaggia Classic Pro measures at 8 inches wide by 9.5 inches deep and is just over 14 inches in height. The $1,750 Rocket Apartamento measures about 11 inches wide by 17 inches deep and is also just over 14 inches in height. Despite the depth of both of these machines, they both fit comfortably on something like the IKEA Fialbo shelf, which only has a depth of 14 inches. And that's because the Rocket Apartamento actually sits on 4 feet with rubber pads that just barely fit within the 14 inch deep footprint. Of course, with the Rocket being the bigger machine, you also get a larger 85 ounce reservoir and a 28 ounce strip tray capacity versus the Gaggia's 72 ounce reservoir and the 16 ounce strip tray capacity. From a usage standpoint, I still found myself emptying out both trip trays at least once a week and refilling both reservoirs at least once a week. This is with the usage of an average of 1-2 to two drinks per day. While both machines are made of stainless steel, the Rocket feels a lot more premium and weighs more than double the Gaggia coming in at 48 pounds versus the Gaggia's 20 pounds. The side panels of the Rocket feel thicker and denser while the Gaggia's do feel a little bit flimsy by comparison. When locking in a group head on these machines, I did notice that with the Rocket you would have a lot less movement of the machine itself, most likely due to the weight of the machine, while with the Gaggia, the machine would sometimes shift over while locking the portafilter in. Both machines will warm cups up if you place it on top of the machine, but you also need to be careful to not put anything wet up there that could drip into the machine. Moving on to the functionality, with something like the Gaggia, you're getting a proprietary brew group, while with the Rocket, you're getting an E61 group head, which is a standardized brew head found on many other premium home espresso machines and commercial machines. While both accept the standard 58mm basket, you won't be able to use any other type of portafilter on the Gaggia other than portafilters that are designed to work specifically with that group head. The Rocket, on the other hand, will work with any portafilter designed to work with the standard E61 group head. Both have options for customizability in terms of the portafilter handle, but again, with the E61 group head on the Rocket, you have a wider variety and range. With the Gaggia, you only have a single boiler, which means that you will have to wait after pulling a shot for the temperature to heat up again for milk steaming. Or, if you work backwards, you'll have to purge the hot water after steaming to pull a shot. With the Rocket being a heat exchanger machine, you'll have no issues with both steaming and pulling a shot at the same time, or immediately doing shots back to back. Speaking of steaming, from my own experience, the Gaggia has just enough power to froth an 8-10 to 10 ounce milk pitcher for about 2 cappuccinos before having to wait for it to heat up again. When steaming up milk, I've also found that the Gaggia takes about 40 seconds to a minute to get the milk up to temp. With the Rocket, steaming power is an absolute beast. I found myself being able to froth an 8-10 to 10 ounce milk pitcher in around 20 seconds or so, and it feels like there's a lot more power if needed to steam larger pitchers. The Rocket Steam One also features no burn tips that won't have milk stuck to the tip if you don't wipe and purge immediately after. Moving on to the espresso itself. Does a machine that costs over $1200 more produce better espresso? And the quick answer is no. With both machines paired with a decent grinder, you will get great tasting shots. The biggest difference comes in consistency. Once I have a shot dialed in, I feel like I can pull the exact same shot back to back with the Rocket, whereas there will always be some slight discrepancies with the Gaggia. Although neither machine features a PID to control the temperature, the temperature stability of the Rocket feels a lot better than the Gaggia. The other big difference is steam power. If you're looking to make two cappuccinos in the morning, each with a double shot of espresso, it can take close to 10 minutes with the Gaggia's workflow. In the same amount of time, the Rocket can easily create multiple drinks back to back, and this is one of the biggest reasons why I upgraded. Finally, aesthetics. For an appliance as big and eye-catching as an espresso machine, I wanted something that looks good. And to me, the matte black side panels of the Apartamento Nera series combined with the chrome stainless steel looks amazing in my setup. The brushed metal finish to the Gaggia wasn't the best looking in my opinion. Although, recently Whole Latte Love has added some new colors for this machine that I'll leave a link to down in the description below if you're interested in checking out. So which machine is the right one for you? If you're just starting in the world of espresso and don't want to spend a ton, I suggest you go for the Gaggia. It'll still produce some great tasting shots and can definitely make a cappuccino or two. If you're the type to eventually want to upgrade or need the power to make drinks for family and friends, I would suggest saving up for a machine like the Rocket or another more capable machine. Do keep in mind that with both machines, you should also budget in the cost of a grinder, which can easily run you an additional $250 or more. A good quality espresso grinder will make a world of a difference and is arguably more important than the machine itself. I will also leave links to some common popular espresso grinders in the description below, as well as the one I use, the Niche Zero, along with a very popular review from James Hoffman. 
Did you agree with my thoughts? Anything you disagree with? Feel free to let me know down in the comment section below, as well as any questions you might have, and I'll answer as many as I can get to. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.